but I hope you won't let those comments affect you because they don't know how much hard work you put in to prepare for every shoot to get to where you are today. <laughs> oh my god. The Smart Local.com Hello. Feels weird to be on this side. <laughs> Hello. Hello. What are some of the most hurtful things people have said about you? In my very first video with It Book, one of the comments said, Kara is such a tryhard. It's just one word, but until today, after two years, I'm still somewhat affected by it. It made me doubt myself. I love laughing, I love talking, and if that's tryhard, right? Should I be someone else? Should I not laugh so loudly? Not only try hard, but like fat shaming. Kara is getting fatter. These things actually really affected me, not only emotionally, but psychologically as well. Your job is to eat, and everybody thinks you're fat. What are you gonna do? Okay, you see, it's not everybody thinks I'm fat, but I think that everybody thinks I'm fat because of one comment. One comment can actually harm people in a big way. Most of the hard-hitting things that have been said to me have been pertaining to mental health. I first getting exposed to like mental health issues when I was in SEC 2. I first opened up to like my closest friends in school. They didn't react very well to it. One of the more common things they would say is like, you know, why are you so weak? Everyone has their own problems in life, but you don't see us getting depression and having to like go for counselling. So what's so bad about your life? Those are like people I care about. Uh. But the people who are not really like friends, they'll be like, oh, she's so weak, then might as well don't leave her. Like, if she wanna kill herself, then just go. Or like, if she cannot even handle life at this stage, like, what's the point of living? The worst thing that I've been told wasn't by anybody else but myself. I was being sent on a work trip. It was my first work trip where I was alone from my department and I had to edit the entire travel video myself. If they had confidence in me doing this, they gave me the confidence. I just really did the best that I could, but it wasn't good enough. My supervisor sat me down and go through the entire video with me, how I can basically salvage the video to make it flow better and more interesting. When I see what they see, I was so disappointed myself. I had all these thoughts in my head. I'm a disappointment. They probably regretted sending me on this trip or worse, they probably regretted converting me to a full-timer because I probably proven that I don't have the skills or, or techniques. There's this one thing that kind of stuck with me for a long time. It happened when I was in lower secondary. I was actually in CCA. We had fallen in already. In but this senior, let's call him A, he decided to come directly to me in the formation and ask me to move out of the squad. There was this other guy I've never spoken to before in my life. A was like, don't worry about it. Let's just have a normal conversation. I was just asking all about B, getting to know him. When suddenly, A stopped me and then turned to B. He said, see, I told you right, he's just like that. B laughed and he said, yeah, in the girly way. I became the butt of the joke because I did not live up to their expectations of what being a, a man was. How do you feel after hearing these hurtful words? Really a bit stressful eh? Like it made me want to just shut up. Every single word I say, I'll just think, oh, maybe it's not what people want to hear. My words are invalid. It changed who I am as a person. I was a very animated person and because of that, I hated myself for a long time. I didn't like how I looked, I didn't like how I acted. I really made conscious efforts to change my mannerisms if I saw myself like with a limp wrist that I would slap myself so that I would stop doing it. I was emotionally and mentally drained. I felt like I was in a black hole and I cannot come out of the black hole. I'm just falling further and further. In SEC 2, I finally decided to take that leap to go for counselling and I told the counsellor that I wanted to end my life. I mean, I can only understand that as a counsellor, you will have to inform people. So she informed my mum and my form teacher. But somehow I felt like the whole class knew. They didn't start it treating me better, but they started looking at me like there was something very wrong with me. Because of how they stigmatised mental health, I felt like even though I wanted to reach out and get help, I could not. I struggled a lot with being called an attention seeker. I tried my best not to talk about these kind of things because I didn't want people to think that I was overreacting or being overdramatic. I was afraid people might think that I cannot handle stress at work. I don't usually address my feelings, I just tend to forget them. But talking about it today, maybe it's just a short-term solution. I never go look for long-term solutions, like talking to someone professional about it. I felt like my problem was not big enough, but now I do realise that big or small, your problems do matter. 
I think the turning point was when I went to Polly, one of my closest friends. She was very, very understanding of my depression and things like that. She was the one who pushed me into seeking help. She showed me the difference between what it's like to support me and be there for me when I seek help rather than sort of like pressuring me and saying like oh my god you are crazy you definitely need to go see the counsellor there's two of my teammates whom I'm very close to and they were there for me they just hear me out when I needed to let my feelings out I've grown to love who I am now being very comfortable with myself wasn't easy I think it took me a while to be more comfortable with my more feminine sides that I still have today I would say that these people who help me see the better sides of me are people that I know that I can rely and trust on and talk to if I ever need help I'm going for therapy and then one of the more recent and things she shared with me which is very helpful is that thoughts are just words so we don't need to give these words so much power oh my god what why no wonder you put the tissue box here hey Kiara it's your office bestie here he he not sure how you're feeling right now but I just want uh, I just want to let you know that I'm really thankful to have you in my life. I know that even though you always appear to be cheerful and full of laughter, but deep down you're still a softie who is easily affected by some mean, bracket and stupid comments. But I hope you won't let those comments affect you because they don't know how much hard work you put in to prepare for every shoot to get to where you are today. <laughs> Know that I'll always be here for you to be your listening ear and ranting buddy. Mm. And this really validated me today a lot. So I really put in a lot of effort and I feel like only I understands. I know. Dear Prof, do you remember the first time we hung out together? That night we spoke about life, love and our growing up years. And you even shared with me one of your biggest secrets. I know I never said this, but opening up has been something that's been really difficult for me. And after seeing you vulnerable and brave, it inspired me to make little changes there. I know growing up has not been the easiest for you and there were moments that may have caused you to question or doubt yourself. I know you've been really strong about it and sometimes you do suppress how you truly feel. I want you to know that no matter what, I am so proud of where you are now and where you're headed to. I will always be your friend and in my eyes, you'll always be beautiful inside and out. Know that I'll always love you and I'm just a phone call away. Love, Mars. Well, that really hit in the feels. I think when we all look back at where we are now, life is filled with hurdles, big and small. And each of these challenges teach us something about ourselves, giving us opportunities to grow. I think you've come a long way from then and have found your own footing in what you do, which is great. Keep looking forward and doing your best. This means a lot to me because John Paul was the one that took time out before my trip to teach me as much as he could. So when I came back and basically the video did not make true right, I felt like I let John Paul down a lot. Overall... Are you serious? You want to contact Ian? Are you mad? I have not had the chance to tell you in whole how much I've experienced you grow. It was all in small ways, like how you got more comfortable with and in your own skin, picking up dance, singing with that angelic voice of yours on Instagram. It may not have been obvious to you, but I noticed all this progression you made and it made me so warm inside to see all this growth. Mental health is never a walk in the park and sometimes it gets stormy in your head. But even though sometimes the comfort shakes and thoughts come back to plague us, always remember that people are here as pillars of support. Even if sometimes our own foundation may be shaky, like how I hope I've been here for you to listen. You are as strong as how willing you are to face your demons. <laughs> and never be afraid to do so. Just know that the people who matter don't mind and the people who do don't matter. I clearly don't mind, so I matter, right? <laughs> How did you feel after reading those messages? I feel well loved by the people around me, oh my god. It's quite unexpected because I really didn't expect people to share so many positive things about myself. Like sometimes I look at myself, I don't see these things. 
the impact is very huge when it comes from people who have seen you at your lowest point and they acknowledge your struggle, they acknowledge how much strength it takes to be who you are on like any regular day where you're just being happy. In late secondary school and poly, I never knew what it was like to have real friends. It was only after I met people in my life who are still my sources of support now, I realised how much difference a friend can make. I think these people are like good examples of what it means to be able to just feel safe with them and create an environment where I can just speak freely about what's on my mind. If you could turn back time to speak to your past self during your darkest times, mm. what would you have done differently? Instead of letting negative comments or people who don't matter affect me, have pent up stress and anxiety in myself, I should, I would be more open to talk about it. I'll always imagine if time travel were a thing, right? Then I go and visit my teenage self and then she'll look very toot wearing her oversized uniform and then she'll be shocked, she'll look at me and be like, oh wow! And then I'll be like, oh yes! And then I'll tell her like, everything that I had wanted as a teenager, I now have. I should take things easy and not everything is the end of the world. I know back then I didn't really feel like I had a lot of people I could count on or like share these things with but a lot of it had to do with the fact that I self-regulated myself in a way that I wouldn't speak about it to certain people even though I may have been closer to them and like after reading these letters people care more than you think I will not wait till the point where I was internally crying for help and for help to come to me there was one night where I was working and I suddenly couldn't take it I was like shouting for help I was shouting in my head it just wouldn't come out of my mouth one of my colleagues he noticed something was going on and he asked me if I was okay it meant a lot to me because he actually put me out of that dark hole that I was in do you have any advice for people who experience something similar or undergoing stress of your own? In terms of like practical ways and like coping mechanisms, the first thing that I did which really changed my life around was becoming more active because when you exercise, you get endorphins and chemically speaking, it will make you feel better. My coping mechanisms apparently were very short term because you're just running away from your feelings, your thoughts. It's very important to speak out and like seek help if needed once you know that you're too clouded with all these negative thoughts and that your emotional and mental health is dropping. Your friends are actually always there. It's okay to be weak in front of your friends because they, they do not want to harm you. They care for you and they want to help you. You feel like don't have avenues to speak with because the people around you, you don't feel comfortable sharing some issues with. There are always hotlines that you can use. I think therapy really, really helps because it's super different from speaking to your friends and family. It's good to have like heart-to-heart -heart talks with them. But when you speak to a therapist, their responses are like completely impartial. They'll be able to give you like the tools you'll need to manage your own emotions and your own like thoughts. At the end of the day, we all need someone to listen to our worries at some point and there's no shame in doing so. Thank you for watching this video. If you are going through a difficult time as well or resonated with any of our stories, do know that you are not alone and it's okay to seek help. Here are some helplines you can call such as Bell Beyond the Label Help Board as well as Samaritans of Singapore. But if you would like to contribute in promoting youth mental well-being, join the Youth Mental Wellbeing Network. Or if you have ideas on how we can remove mental health stigmas, you can take part in the Youth Action Challenge. All these links can be found in the description box down below.